Here's four different custom rifles. We're here to tell you the story of each. Gavin Gu here from UltimateReloader.com. I'm here with Rick Kasner from SDI. Thank you for joining us, Rick. Yeah, no problem. If you have the dream of working in the firearms industry as a gunsmith or in some other capacity, you should definitely check out the Sonoran Desert Institute. Go to sdi.edu or call 480-999-4767. Okay, Rick, here's what I think we should do. Okay. We've got four different rifles here with four different stores. Why don't we talk about the build on each of these and maybe even talk about what we would do differently next time. Yep. So if you've watched the other videos that I've done here with Rick, Rick has a broad uh, set of experiences in the firearms industry, going to gunsmithing school, being a, a working at a gun shop and uh, in the gunsmithing field, an instructor at SDI, and now you're part of the curriculum program, correct? Yep. Yeah, and, and a lot of different experiences to, to get you where you are today in the gunsmithing industry. Yep. I took a different path. I really wanted to chamber my own rifles. I got Gordy Gritter's DVD that he did with Grizzly. I reached out to him separately. He offered to mentor me and, and, and now we're filming productions together. It's really crazy. And so we'll start over here and work our way this way. This is a CMMG six arc AR-15 that Gordy and I, with our, our new venture, G4 Productions, Gavin, Gear, Gordy, Gritters, uh, we filmed a whole program uh, that talks about extreme AR accurizing. And this is an interesting topic because there are so many people that work on ARs, but not a whole lot of people go to that like bench rest level. So what we did was with this was a bunch of things. With the barrel, we did a we slugged it and then we checked it. Ah, it needs some lapping, right? So we lapped it, went through that whole process. We fit the barrel extension to the receiver. We trued the receiver. We recut the crown. Uh, we fit the upper to the lower uh, by relocating the holes on the milling machine and making custom bushings that we could rotate to get just the right amount of <laughs> clamp together in the back and yeah. hammer that, that pin through. Uh, we talked about the trigger, we did an, an upgrade on that, and basically with uh, factory Hornady uh, match ammunition, we took this from about a 7 8 MOA gun down to a 3 8 MOA gun in the li you know, limited testing that we did. So what I like about this build was I got to work with the master. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Well, and it, what's cool about, so it, these might look like two different two different systems that would you would blueprint or, or true up differently, but understanding the concepts of mm -hmm. what you did there would help you understand how this needs to be blueprinted yeah, and absolutely. How, how you can accurize you know, these, these products. So a free-floated fore-end, free-floated fore-end. Yep. You know, a lot of the concepts are the lugs same. Lugs that may need to be lapped over here, lugs that we lapped over here. Yes, mm -hmm. it's slightly different in execution, but yeah. The principles are uh, are definitely the same. So so look for that. We're planning to put that on on Teachable, and that should be a really great resource. I should note, Gordy at the Extreme Accuracy Institute actually has uh, an extreme accurizing class for the AR platform. So that's something that you can do for in-person stuff. Okay, now let's move over to this is the Eddie Van Halen tribute rifle. If you guys know Van Halen, you're going to recognize this paint job. It was from the Frankenstrat. This was a project that involved building a rifle that would be a test bed for you know extreme accuracy testing on you know a variety of cartridges and things like that. I have a, a BAT Model B action here. This was a Krieger barrel blank. I did the chambering, did the typical job on that. A lot of the work on this was on the stock. Mm -hmm. So this is a Wheeler LRB stock. I liked the LRB because I liked the four inch four in and I like the steerable rudder here on the butt stock so that you can tune your tracking and, and get everything going perfectly. Uh, the Citron scope, the, the S5 there. Uh, but the stock work, and it is funny, I did this video on the paint job and I thought that would be the popular video. Nope. The popular video was the stock work because I took this from essentially a hunk of fiberglass 
you know, there was no barrel channel, there was no action inletting. I had to calculate it all. I didn't even have a rifle like this to look at, just pictures. Mm -hmm. that, made, <laughs> that made it a lot harder when you don't have anything to go off of. Yep. So I did my calculations. I got the tools that Alex Wheeler suggested that I get and did all the inletting and uh, did the, the prep work. You know, this is pretty much an automotive style paint job. So I had primer, I wet sanded the primer, I used guide coat to get everything nice and flat, sealer, and then uh, the paint job. So that when we want to talk about things I would do differently next time, mm -hmm. I did the striping in the wrong kind of order. Basically what Eddie Van Halen did is he just laid strips of tape in patterns, painted one, put more strips on, painted the other. I kind of did it somewhat in the reverse of that, so I made it a lot harder than I needed to. Um, and then also, I noted after I was completely done, the caulking piece chipped away the paint. Uh, <laughs> I didn't clearance for that. So, right at the end you end. know, kind of need to mill that out a little bit and do a little bit of, uh, of white touch up there. Uh, but, you know, one of the things that went well after an initial mess up, <laughs> I, I got to tell the story of this real quick. Okay, so I go to do the bedding on this with DevCon, which was a suggestion from the Bat Machine guys. It doesn't shrink much. They like the way it works yeah. and all that, okay? I've got everything all, all ready to go, and I run out of material, and I go to mix more, and the scale dies on me. So anyways, it took a little bit of work to get around that, but they had me use a heat gun and get all the bubbles, tease up all the bubbles to the top, and squish it down and overflow. It actually worked out perfectly. Yeah in the end, after a, a little bit of stress there. So so the question is, is did you do your bedding before or after the paint job? It was before. Yeah, yep. that's very important to, I, get, get your bedding done before you do any stock work or your, your mm -hmm. metal work. And mm -hmm. that's what I didn't do on this. Okay, well, yeah. well, I'm looking forward to hearing about that. So at the end of the day, I, I like the rifle mission accomplished, but uh, like anything else, this was my first bench rest build, and I did discover I probably wouldn't want to build these for other people. Yeah. So many hours, it would, it would kind of be hard to make good money at it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you couldn't charge what it was worth. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So how about your rifles? Let's, let's hear about them. Yeah, so this is a Howa 1500, so basically a Weatherby Vanguard action, mm -hmm. kind of the same thing. Um, this was the first rifle I ever built, so this is the one that I built when I was in gunsmithing school. There's hmm. additions that I've made or alterations I've made since school. Like I put the muzzle brake on, mm -hmm. which we didn't do in school. Uh, inside the stock, because this is a wood, so wood is is going to move, yeah. twist and bend with moisture. So you try to, to mitigate that. It's a free-floated forend, so you tap, basically you tape um, uh, your, like a, they make a, like a 20 mil Mm -hmm. uh, plumber's tape. You tape that around so then you can you can inlet the stock. You get your um, clearance inherently you there. Get the, you get the clearance, but then I but then I epoxied a uh, carbon fiber arrow shaft in there. So it's mm -hmm. still lightweight but strong hmm. so that it it mitigates that twist and mm -hmm. that, that um, torquing that you'll get uh, with moisture. Plus sealing the wood is an important thing to, to mitigate that. Mm -hmm. um, so then, but yeah, in school, this is, was a, this is a shillin barrel. I, I uh, chambered it, threaded it, did all that. Was um, that your first chambering? Yeah, uh, well, we did some test chambering before Okay. That, but this gotcha. was the first one on an actual firearm. So my first chambering on a real firearm was also a shillin barrel, that's funny. Okay, yeah, <laughs> and, and it blueprinted the action, so we faced off mm. the, we had to cut the old barrel off and then we faced the action. Um, Lap the lap the lugs, mm -hmm. um, did all that stuff that you normally do, but then the bedding right with regular uh, acroglass gel, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. I'm not a fan of acroglass gel. I'm a fan more of like just regular acroglass hmm. with fiberglass flocking in it. Interesting. And I hmm. found that you can mix that into consistency that's better. The hmm. gel is kind of it's harder to work with. Gotcha. Um, hmm. But anyway, so then it has. I also noticed, uh, you know, after I used this for a couple of seasons or had it for a couple of years, the stock continued to dry out and I got some cracking 
here in the wrist mm -hmm. right behind the action. So then I went in and, and did the fix. The correct fix is, is to um, drill and uh, drill a, a hole so that you can place a, a rod down in there and I epoxied the rod into the wrist so it strengthens that wrist so that crack will stop. Hmm. And, um, but anyway, so you can still see it there. Um, but yeah, shape the, shape the stock. And, and what did you start with for the stock, by the way? This was a duplicated stock, so much like this one right here. Okay. It started out... Kind of a blank, but with inletting... Yeah, it was, in. it was a lot more rough than this one, even. <laughs> like, it had sort of a barrel channel, but okay. not much. Gotcha. So there's a lot of inletting work that, that mm -hmm. had to be done, but basically a duplicated stock, and then you get it to that point. So a lot of uh, transfer dye and... and uh, like your inletting black, impression blue, something yeah. like that. And then you have to work with that and get all the high spots out. And that can be tedious. Mm -hmm. That can be a lot of work. You had that experience with this. A lot of manual mill work. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so anyway, and then I did a, a velvet oil finish on this, hand rubbed velvet, velvet oil finish. And it came out pretty nice. Mm -hmm. um, Beautiful. What I like about the oil finishes is if it gets, if you, you know, if it gets rough, you can uh, kind of buff it down with a four aught steel wool, mm -hmm. and then go back over a, with an oil. Another layer, and then it's, it kind of spruces it back up, makes it look pretty again. Nice. I haven't done hand rubbed oil, so that that's something I'm going to have to try. Yeah. So, and you will. Yes. Yeah, with that, yeah, I just got to get a mouser. <laughs> um, <laughs> so some of the mistakes that I made on this again was the uh, the the uh, splitting of the wrist. Um, my bedding job is probably not the prettiest in the world, <laughs> but it does. And I also have pillars, so I cut my own pillars in here mm -hmm. um, to give it a, more of a secure action. Hold. I think bedding is something that you have to incrementally improve your skills on. You know, the yeah. bubbles, the the mess that you cause. You know, if you can minimize the mess as you're going, it's just going to make your life a whole lot more. Oh pleasant. yeah, yeah. So yeah. with bedding, it's it's so important to do all your prep work. Mm -hmm. Make sure you take time on the prep work mm -hmm. because you don't want to be running around like a crazy man <laughs> later when you realize you didn't put enough release agent yeah. on, the, on the parts. Right. Um, so right underneath here, I got a little too crazy when I was inletting down <laughs> here for the bottom metal yep. with, the, with the mill and I swiped the side. So then later I had to do some patchwork. Mm -hmm. um, more training, right? More training. So yeah, that <laughs> brings up a good point as far as I really like working on my own projects mm -hmm. because you can make mistakes, mm -hmm. but then you have to fix some mistakes. So figure it out because as a gunsmith, you're going to be fixing maybe, hopefully not your own mistakes, but it might happen, but you are going to be fixing a whole lot of other people's mistakes. Yeah. Especially if those firearms are, you know, have been around for a length of time, <laughs> people have most likely fiddled with them and made mistakes. Maybe even used general moto tools on them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so anyway, so that's, that, that's kind of a breakdown of this one. Mm -hmm. um, then this one was the latest one I done. It's, uh, or I've, I, I've done, th this is a work in progress. Mm -hmm. um, there's still a lot more that I want to do to it and I probably want to do some more stock work to it. So this is a 30-06 and this is a 300 Win Mag, was 300 it? 300 Win Mag, okay. yep. So, this, I got, I went to a, a regular gun show and mm -hmm. I got a, a 30 out six. So this is a, a Remington 700 action. Yep. C okay. series. So C, it was, a, it was a good action and it had a 30 out six barrel on it. So I took that barrel off mm -hmm. and then put the, ex, the thicker recoil lug on it. Yep. There. Yep. I love that. And then uh, put a, put a heavy, a heavy Schneider barrel on there. And then my friend actually made this uh, this muzzle break here, and we threaded hmm. that on. And um, what did you do for your bolt? You had a, a thirty out six bolt head. Yeah. So let's look at that. I uh, so for the bolt, the bolt has a lot of work actually done to it. So I I uh, threaded. So I cut off the the old bolt handle. Mm -hmm. I threaded, turned down, and threaded a. a uh, length you know a shank on on the uh, bolt handle did you have a bolt turning fixture to do your your threading and turning yep yep okay and then i made this uh, my own uh bolt knob here so awesome. that's on the lathe mm -hmm. and then we opened up the uh the bolt head here mm -hmm. 
and then uh, and then I also put in a um, Seiko style extractors. Gotcha. So I cut that. So that's a separate jig you you can have, or you just do it off of your own calculations on mm -hmm. a mill if you're if you're good at setting up on a mill. Mm -hmm. So you would have to cut that length there, and then and then uh, drill in. Um, your, your hole, yeah. yeah. So this this actually has had a lot of work, but yeah, regular blueprinting. So I, you know, when I first, was first doing it, faced off the action, lapped the lugs, mm -hmm. did all that action work. So um, got the got the tolerances for headspace like right there, to where you put a shim of tape on it and it can't close. Like mm -hmm. there's there's no <laughs> play in that. So um, so anyway, so that's some of the work that I did on this. Some of the mistakes that I wish that I did or, or that I had that I wouldn't have made is I put on this four end tip here. Yep. It's a different, it's a different walnut. So this is English walnut and this is uh, maybe not Turkish walnut, but some other walnut there. And I should have put a spacer in yeah. between it like I did on this <laughs> because you can't really see it. Right. And I also have the same walnut that I have here for the grip cap. But again, you can't see it because it's so close in color. <laughs> <laughs> to the rest of the stock yeah. um, but so that's a mistake but one thing that I did do learning from this experience is while I was going through it and, and uh, you know working on this and carving the stock mm -hmm. I went ahead and put a, a rod down in the wrist so I mitigate the risk of, yep. of it warping I sealed the wood really well and I did the uh, carbon fiber arrow shaft in the mm -hmm. foreend as well so yep. then that just kind of takes that away. Again, this is free floated on the fore end. Did you flute the uh, barrel or was that already? That was already fluted. Yeah. But yeah. And it's not engraved yet, so I think we should uh, go by my store and fire up the fiber laser. I would love that. Yeah. Yeah, because there's no marking on here. So if anybody ever inherited this and they <laughs> they would have to do a chamber casting to figure out what, what that's chambered <laughs> yeah. for. So, Well, that's awesome. Did you start that one with the stock blank? Like, like yeah, this so one? this one was way more rough okay. than this. So this one was a duplicated one like that one. Mm -hmm. Not much of a barrel channel, but it still had something. This one didn't have anything. Hmm. So like it, it was it was almost a block, of, uh, like a two, four, two by four block, hmm. you know, it was just, it was big. Mm -hmm. And so I had to do the mill work to, to cut the barrel channel, do the, I did all the inletting as far as, as much as I could do on the, mm -hmm. the uh, mill. And then I um, did the regular, you know, your fine tuning with your with your inletting ink. Yeah. But yeah. So this was very. This was very, pretty much just a mm -hmm. chunk of wood. Very cool stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Four different rifles. Four different stories, and a lot more to come. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> There's always that next project. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, Rick. Yeah. No problem. It's been fun to talk talk through these. If, again, if you have the dream of working in the firearms industry and you're not there yet, check out the Sonoran Desert Institute, sdi.edu, or call 480-999-4767. Here's what we'd like to know. What do you think of our projects? What do you think our next project should be? Please drop a comment and we'll start a discussion. That concludes this video and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content, and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. If you're interested in custom rifles like what we build here on the channel or gunsmithing services, you're going to want to go to rifles.ultimatereloader.com and get on the wait list. If you're interested in becoming a professional gunsmith, check out the Sonoran Desert Institute. They've got a degree program, they've got a certificate program, and you can study from home. Learn more at sdi.edu. Thanks again for watching.